This week on Christian World News, Christians form a sacred bond with the embattled nation of Israel. Meet the growing number of Christians who are supporting the Jewish state. Plus, when they say church without walls, they really mean it. See how these men are bringing the gospel to their city's homeless population by literally taking church to the streets. And social media is having a negative impact on many w young women in China. We'll show you how the church is bringing a different perspective. Christians United for Israel or Kufi has grown to more than 3 million members. Founder Pastor John Hagee started out 11 years ago to teach Christians about the biblical mandate to stand with Israel. Because every evangelical has a biblical basis for supporting the state of Israel. Supporting Israel is not a political issue, it's a Bible issue. Kufi is having an impact on presidential politics. One network credits the group with influencing Republicans to adopt the most pro-Israel platform in U.S. history. So because of Christians United for Israel, which was specifically named in the article, the Republican Party said, we're going to have a plank that says, Jerusalem shall be an undivided city in the future. Even with that political victory, Middle East experts like Colonel Oliver North believe Israel is under more threat than ever. Now, the Iranians and the North Koreans are building nuclear weapons and the means of delivering them that have Israel as the nearest target and us ultimately as the great Satan target. So uh, it's different than the threat has ever been before. So Kufi, Christians United for Israel, can make all the difference in the world in terms of educating people about the real threat and what we ought to do about it. Simple as that. Kufi believes a big part of standing with Israel is what's happening on college campuses today. Behind me is something you might see in a college campus. It's an apartheid wall. It vilifies Israel's security barrier. So Kufi has enlisted hundreds of students around the country to present the truth about Israel. They call it the battle for the future. We're fighting the for the future of Israel. We're fighting the for the future of America. Kufi Representative Maria Lilly says pro-Palestinian groups often try and shut down pro-Israel speech on college campuses. We're in for a battle. Um, on so many college campuses around the country and even around the world, students face so much anti-Semitism and backlash for their support of Israel. Pastor Hagee feels it's crucial for the U.S. to stand with Israel. The Bible verse, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you is the promise of God and God keeps his promises. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Washington. 집단 학살과 기독교 박해 등으로 중동에 사는 기독교인들은 갈수록 줄어들고 있습니다. 하지만 그 가운데서도 이스라엘은 기독교인들에게 가장 안전한 피난처가 되고 있는데요. 중동과 그리스 정교회 성직자로 섬기고 있는 가브리엘 나다프 신부는 최근 CUFI 회의를 통해 이스라엘이 기독교인들에게 매우 안전한 곳이라고 전했습니다. He says, today there is just one country in the Middle East where Christians live in peace and security. In Israel, they have freedom of speech and religion. They can exercise their faith freely and they have democratic rights. IS로 인해 고통을 당하고 있는 것은 기독교인들뿐만이 아니죠. 소수민족인 야지디족도 IS로 인해 집단 학살의 공포를 경험하고 있는데요. 전 세계가 이들에게 도움을 주어야 한다고 외치는 한 이라크 의원이 있다고 합니다. 함께 만나보시죠. The world took notice after lawmaker Vian Dakil's impassioned plea to save fellow Yazidis trapped on Iraq's Sinjar mountain. Our families have been slaughtered. Set aside your political differences. In the name of humanity, I call upon all of you to save us, to save us. It was August 2014. 
Islamic State fighters overran Yazidi villages around Sinjar and Zumar near the Mosul Dam. Men were slaughtered, women and children kidnapped. The jihadists forced boys to join ISIS, while girls were raped, bought and sold for sex. The United States responded to Dakil's cry of desperation, airlifting supplies to Sinjar Mountain. Help was delivered to as many as 10,000 Yazidis who had fled ISIS. As her people died from thirst and hunger, Dakil traveled to Sinjar to personally deliver food and water. When she left the mountain, many Yazidis frantically boarded her departing helicopter. Dangerously overweight, the helicopter crashed. Were you hurt? Were you in injured badly? Yeah. What, what happened? Um, my legs, it's uh, broken completely, and my rib, and head, and uh, shoulders. Dakil is healed now and doing well. Was risking her life and suffering personal injury worth it? Yes, of course. Yes. Those my people, those in general, those are a human being. And some terrorists come and kill them. And Christians, including CBN, were among the first providing relief. The Christian um, groups or Christian community, it's helped the Yazidi people. Yeah, it's helped them. And now, two years later, as world attention focuses on immigration, Dakil is renewing her call for assistance. She says the Yazidis still need help rebuilding their lives and cities in Iraq. We, we need some, someone to pray for, for the Yazidi people and another to help them and another to, to focus for the situation of those Yazidi. Because sometimes the people are forget what happened. Forgetting that 400,000 Yazidis still live in tents as refugees, often enduring harsh weather conditions. Still we have 1,000 boys between six to 10 years are uh, captured in the special place in the Mosul, wash the brain, the brain of them, and teaching them to, to use the weapon, a, a new ger generation for, for terrorists, for ISIS. And ISIS still holds 3,500 Yazidi females captive. Dakil says fortunately, 2,000 girls and children have escaped. But they need a psychological therapy. This is the situation now, after two years, and nobody cares. Hoping to raise awareness and help, Dakil's sister, Dilan, started the Sinjar Foundation. A medical doctor, she has treated Yazidi girls who either escaped or were rescued from ISIS. Dilan told us about a 16-year-old girl who was raped several times after one jihadist traded her to another for a cigarette. I also have the mother who told me about her own nine years old girls who have been raped in front of her eyes that bleeded till death. We, we are hearing a terrible stories every day. Many of the girls have suffered physical abuse and torture. Dilan says their emotional scars could last a lifetime. Actually they are releasing from hell to, to another hell to, to, to come to live in, in a community, in a tent. In, a, in a refugee camps, and, and most of their family members have been either kid, kidnapped or killed in front of their eyes. She says the Yazidi girls and their families need therapy. She wants American psychologists specializing in trauma to teach Iraqis how to help them. Dilan says she too may need counseling. These stories will stay with me for the whole of my life. I, have, I spent many nights that I couldn't sleep and I've cried till the morning. To be honest, I'm traumatized as well. Do you think that's a good idea for us to pray for of these course, girls or what? Of course, it would be great. They are emotionally effective. Anything would help them. If, of course, praying, it will be a great thing to do. Voices for a voiceless people. Two sisters requesting prayer and help for the Yazidis and ethnic religious people the world now says are victims of ISIS genocide. Gary Lane, CBN News, Erbil, Iraq. 무려 5년간의 준비 과정을 거친 다 함께 2016 행사가 워싱턴 DC에서 열렸습니다. 예수 그리스도를 찬양하기 위해 마련된 행사에는 수많은 사람들이 모였는데요. 아쉽게도 폭염 때문에 예정보다 좀더 일찍 행사가 마무리됐다고 합니다.
Saturday temperatures quickly climbed above 90 degrees here in Washington, D.C. But the steamy weather didn't keep hundreds of thousands from answering the call to come to the National Mall, to stand together, worship together, and pray together. This isn't about perfect people gathering. This is about imperfect people. And we're all gathering to seek the perfect one. There's only one answer. It's Jesus. Nick Hall is the man behind this massive event called Together 2016. And recording artists like Hillsong United, Lecrae, and Matthew West lent their voices to the experience. I was overwhelmed by the crowd, just the size of the crowd. There was thousands, hundreds of thousands of people's, people standing in that, uh, that place today celebrating the God who forgives, the God who renews, and the God who can bring healing to our hurting nation. Packing the National Mall with a million people to pray has been in the works for the last five years, but the timing of it, considering what's happened in our world in the last few weeks, couldn't have been more perfect. Unfortunately, extreme heat forced the Parks Department to shut things down about five hours early. That decision came after hundreds had to be treated for heat-related illnesses. I love that we're together. It's good to see a glimpse of what heaven might be like one day. This is just a glimpse, but when it comes down to it, we got to, at one point, whether it's at 9 o'clock or now, be ready to walk out of here and live it out. Christian concert organizer Ryan Romeo was there when Minister Nick Hall first announced plans for Together 2016 five years ago. How bummed are you that it had to end early? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's, it's five years of them planning that. Uh, that, was, that was a hard thing. But, you know, I talked to one of the leaders right after, and he said, you know, I just got to trust that the Lord had something in that. You know, even with tears in his eyes, he said, I have to trust that God knows what he's doing and that something amazing still happened even though we had to end it early you know because the true measure of success is what changes after leaving the park Ephraim Graham CBN News Washington 미주리 캔자스 시티에서는 노숙자들을 대상으로 아주 특별한 사역이 이루어지고 있다고 합니다 이동식 예배당을 통해 노숙자들의 발걸음을 교회로 인도하는 건데요 예배를 통해 많은 노숙자들의 영혼이 회복되고 있다고 합니다. 함께 만나보시죠. Songs of praise fill the air under this bridge near downtown Kansas City. This church behind me, which doesn't have any walls and no pews, is touching the lives of some of the most unreached people in the heart of Kansas City. Welcome to the Worship Wagon, a mobile church serving the poor and homeless. Those attending this church on wheels participate in a weekly non-denominational service each Monday night and are encouraged to come as they are. Bruce McGregor and Joe Ratterman came up with the idea. It's really fun because we'll set up sometimes about 5.30 in the evening and no one will be here. And then we'll get the music going and you'll see people just drifting out of the woods, which is behind us, along with the Missouri River, where about 100 people live, 100 homeless people live there year round. And those are our parishioners. My wife and I were working with the homeless for uh, about 12 years now. And um, we, were, we tried really hard uh, in a few different ways to you know, think about taking people out of the street and uh, into a, a, you know, a world in which we feel more comfortable. And uh, we learned some lessons that way that uh, maybe that's not always the best way to, to bring you know, God's word to those people. We decided to bring the church onto the street instead. Each week, volunteers from local churches fill the wagon with equipment needed for the service. We just have a simple single axle trailer. But in that trailer, we have packed it out. We have a really professional grade uh, sound system that's very compact and we can wheel it out and get it set up very quickly. We have a quiet generator, you can't even hear it, but it powers the whole sound system. So we can, we can have a complete band here playing worship music with just that system. And, and then also in the trailer, we've got a ton of chairs. And then we, during the winter, we put a commercial grade heater. It runs off diesel and electricity. I mean, it looks like a huge uh, uh, satellite installation. It's so big, but it heats up this whole area under the bridge. So some guys will just come to get warm and then they hear the gospel. And so it's fun to see how that happens. Rain or shine, the wheels keep rolling. We've been down here every Monday but one for a year and a half. 
and the only reason we missed it was because uh, this road over here was uh, too icy to drive down. Um, but we've been down here when it's uh, in the teens with howling uh, north winds, and we're all shivering in our, uh, in our, in our caps and gloves. Uh, and uh, we've been out here when it's been 100 degrees, and there's been thunderstorms rolling around as well, uh, rain. So, you know, we've been blessed with this amazing location that covers us. And so, you know, as long as there's not a tornado right on top of us or ice on the street, I think we have, you know, license to basically come down here and set up shop. Volunteer Melvin Cole says he often sees extraordinary reaction from those in the audience during worship. Some of the people will just get up and high five you right in the middle of the song and they'll dance around. I mean, I dance with them, you know, I get out and just shake hands, dance with them. You really want the people to feel connected and that we all are worshiping God together. Beverly Cole saw her life transformed by the ministry, a message she now shares with others. I was a drug addict for, for many, many years, you know, and I know God changed me from the inside out, so I know if he could change me, he could change anybody. Meanwhile, the worship wagon plans to continue bringing church to the down and out in need of hope and healing. God works with us where we're at. You know, I think that's the biggest uh, story here about you know, Worship Wagon is you know, bringing God uh, and being his, his eyes and ears, hands and feet where the people are at instead of thinking that you can bring the people to where you're at. SNS는 우리 삶에 막대한 영향을 끼칩니다. 좋든 싫든 우리는 SNS를 통해 보고 듣는 것들에 영향을 받는 건데요. 최근 중국에서는 SNS를 통해 외모에 지나치게 집착하는 젊은 여성들이 늘고 있어 우려를 낳고 있다고 합니다. 이에 교회가 이들을 돕기 위해 나섰다고 합니다. 人们都不会 I always pay attention to my weight. It's important to me. Being on a diet has been my favorite choice to avoid gaining extra weight. Many Chinese girls go on diets to attract or keep boyfriends. Some fear their boyfriends might compare them to other slimmer girls. Christian health expert Dr. Sun Liang strongly opposes this type of behavior. He's worried it could create potential health issues for young females, such as anorexia, and other eating disorders. I don't normally tell my female students and friends to lose weight unless they have to. As a health expert, I always encourage them to love who they are. Losing weight is good, but we still need protein to be healthy. Japan was the first Asian country to report an increase in eating disorders among millennials. China is now the most recent to report this growing problem. A 2009 study found that eating disorders are prevalent among large Asian countries. Most of them habitually use laxatives to lose weight. The practice is spreading among college women, with 43% of them now identified as at risk for an eating disorder. It's not that I don't want to eat the food. It's more about how to eat the food and remain the ideal body shape. The struggle is real and it's painful. Among Christians, few of our sisters in my church are suffering the same problem. We need to remember God's word. Our body is the holy temple. We ought to honor the temple by appreciating our bodies. On one hand, the debate regarding body images is more likely to go on for a while. On the other hand, majority of the Chinese women believe that society should not pressure anyone to change their bodies. The good news is more Chinese health experts will continue to educate Chinese millennials on this critical matter. I'm going to invite more Christian health experts to join this mission. We need to see ourselves as the way God sees us. We are perfectly made in His image. 
All women are beautifully and fearfully made. Meng Fei Li for CBN News, Beijing, China. 한편 CBN 오퍼레이션 블레싱 팀은 페루에서 어린 산모들을 돕고 있다고 합니다. OB's Young Women's Pregnancy Program in Peru teaches women just like Julissa how to safely deliver their babies. That knowledge proved to be helpful when Julissa suddenly went into labor while visiting her grandmother. Unable to get to a hospital in time, she delivered her healthy baby boy Angel on her own. Julissa learned how to confidently give birth with Operation Blessings Help. And she and her healthy son are doing wonderful and are thriving, thank God. 오늘 준비한 소식은 여기까지입니다. 저는 다음 주에 다시 찾아오겠습니다. 시청해주신 여러분 고맙습니다. Yeah. <laughs>